Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Event County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 22, hosted by SSCL librarian Linda Reimer. This video cast is being recorded on Thursday, October 1st, 2020. And kicking things off, we have the top five books on the fiction bestseller list for this week, courtesy of the New York Times. At number one, The Book of Two Waves by Jody Picot. After surviving a plane crash, a death doula travels to Egypt to reconnect with an old flame who is an archaeologist. At number two, The Coast to Coast Murders by James Patterson and J.D. Barker. A detective and an FBI agent are baffled by a cross-country killing spree. At number three, The Evening and the Morning by Ken Follett. In a prequel to The Pillars of the Earth, a boat builder, a Norman noblewoman, and a monk live in England under attack by the Welsh and the Vikings. And just FYI, the book is set in the early 11th century before the Norma Conquest. At number four, Next to Last Stand by Craig Johnson. That's a tongue twizzler. Try saying next to last stand 10 times fast. But again, I digress. This is the new Craig Johnson book, the 16th book in the Longmire series, a million dollars in a shoebox, and a piece of a painting might be clues to an art heist. And I have actually read that one. I sat down and read it last week. I'm a big Craig Johnson fan. It's a nice, intelligent, cozy mystery, if you will. And at number five, Vince Flynn, Total Power by Kyle Mills. When America's power grid is shut down, Mitch Rapp goes after a cyber terrorist. Moving on to the top five books on the nonfiction bestseller list for this week. At number one, Rage by Bob Woodward. Based on 17 on the record interviews with President Trump and other reporting, the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist details the president's perspective on multiple crises. At number two, My Own Words by Ruth Bader Ginsburg with Mary Hartnett and Wendy W. Williams, a collection of articles and speeches by the Supreme Court Justice. At number three, Blackout by Candace Owens. The conservative commentator makes her case that black Americans should part ways with the Democratic Party. At number four, Killing Crazy Horse by Bill O'Reilly and Martin Duggard. The ninth book in the conservative commentator's Killing series focuses on conflicts with Native Americans. And at number five, Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. The Pulitzer Prize winning journalist examines aspects of caste systems across civilizations and reveals a rigid hierarchy in America today. Kicking things off with our first recommended read for the week. This is a mystery. It's called In a Strange City, and it's written by Laurel Lipman. Edgar Seamus Anthony and Agatha Award winner Lipman pays homage to the inventor of the mystery form in this masterly contemporary mystery. Set in Baltimore and replete with her trademark dry sardonic wit. Every January 19th, in honor of Edgar Allan Poe's birthday, a loyal clique waits in the small hours for The Visitor, also known as the Poe Toaster, to approach Poe's tomb. He wears a formal cape and carries three blood red roses and a bottle of cognac as tribute. For some reason, the press keep their distance as do bystanders. This year, and for the first time, 
P.I. Tess Monaghan is present too, along with her boyfriend Crow. Having been roped into attendance by a would-be client, Tess awaits the coming of the visitor in the freezing winter night. Suddenly, two cape men with roses and cognac show up. A shot rings out. One man lies dead and the other runs off. A deliciously complex story follows that brings Baltimore center stage and delves anew into the mystery surrounding Poe himself. Tess finds her own life in danger and becomes a primary player in a story she'd simply intended to view only from the periphery. The author offers a host of Poe-esque thrills, from multiple murders to a woman buried alive. In the denouement, the clock ticks rapidly while Tess matches wits with the killer in order to rescue the victim from her tomb before her air runs out. Lipman shows in this her sixth novel that she's indeed deserving of all the kudos she's received. And that is the Star Publishers Weekly Review and our first recommended read of the week. Our second recommended read for this week is called Transcendent Kingdom, a novel written by Ya Jesse. Transcendent Kingdom is a meticulous, psychologically complex novel that examines the consequences of a Ghanaian family's immigration to Huntsville, Alabama. Gifty, the only member of the family born in the United States, is six years into a doctorate in neuroscience at Stanford, where she is attempting to see if she can alter the neural pathways leading to addiction and depression. Her project is motivated by the fate of her beloved older brother, who died from a heroin overdose when she was in high school, and also by the condition of her depressed mother, who is currently staying at Gifty's apartment. Though she now determinedly puts her faith in science, Gifty still feels the pull of her evangelical upbringing, and she struggles to reconcile the two opposing belief systems while also juggling her dissertation and care for her mother, plus a growing attraction to her awkward lab mate. And she has a lot going on. The narrative moves smoothly between the present and Gifty's childhood, with episodes such as a summer spent in Ghana with her aunt during a previous phase of her mother's depression, rising in the background, all the while Gifty works her way up in her field. JC's constraint renders the emotional impact of the novel all the more powerful. Her descriptions of the casual racism endured by the family particularly at the hands of their nearly all white church in Alabama, is more chilling for being so matter of fact. At once a vivid evocation of immigrant experience and a sharp delineation of an individual's inner struggle, the novel brilliantly succeeds on both counts. And that is the Star Publishers Weekly Review of our second recommended read of the week. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is called The Bear, written by Andrew Kerbeck and read by Eric Jason Martin. In an endemic future, a girl and her father live close to the land in the shadow of a lone mountain. They possess a few remnants of civilization, some books, a pane of glass, a set of flint and steel, a comb, the father teaches the girl how to fish and hunt, the secrets of the seasons, and the stars. He is preparing her for an adulthood in harmony with nature, for they are the last of humankind. But when the girl finds herself alone in an unknown landscape, it is a bear that will lead her back home through a vast wilderness that offers the greatest lessons of all only she can learn to listen. A cautionary tale of human fragility, of love and loss, the bear is a stunning tribute to the beauty of nature's domination. 
our second audiobook recommendation for this week is fiction again, and it is also historical fiction. It's called The Book of Lost Names, written by Kristen Harmel and read by Madeline Maybe. Harmel brilliantly imagines the life of a young Polish French Jewish woman during the depths of World War II. In 2005, Eva Traub, 86, lives in Winter Park, Florida, and works at the library, where she reads a newspaper story about a man in Germany returning rare books looted by the Nazis to World War II survivors. The story includes a photo of a book that once belonged to her, prompting her to leave immediately for Berlin. Harmel then transitions back to 1940s France when 23-year-old Eva and her mother escape the roundups in Paris and end up in the tiny town of Avergon. Eva meets document forger Remy Duchamp, who draws her into the resistance. Remy trains Eva, and the two inevitably grow closer as they work to provide papers for those fleeing the Nazi regime. Eva and Remy devise a method of recording the names of unaccompanied escaping children, coding each name in an old library book, which Eva saw in the newspaper story. Now in Berlin, Eva hopes to recover and decode the names and learn the fate of Remy. Harmel movingly illustrates Eva's courage to risk her own life for others, and all of the characters are portrayed with realistic compassion. This thoughtful work will touch readers with its testament to the endurance of hope. It sounds like a hopeful story and it is available in the digital catalog now. Moving on to our streaming video recommendations for this week. The first one is called Emily in Paris, season one, and it's available through Netflix now. Emily, an ambitious 20-something marketing executive from Chicago, unexpectedly lands her dream job in Paris when her company acquires a French luxury marketing company and she is tasked with revamping their social media strategy. Emily's new life in Paris is filled with intoxicating adventures and surprising challenges as she juggles winning over her work colleagues, making friends, and navigating new romances. And that's the Rotten Tomatoes review. And that sounds like a nice upbeat series, so I thought I'd recommend that. The second recommendation for this week on the streaming video front is a little different. It's got some black humor to it. It's called Dick Johnson is Dead, and it's available through Netflix. Dick Johnson is Dead is a 2020 American documentary film directed by Kirsten Johnson and co-written by Johnson and Nels Bargater. The story focuses on Johnson's father, Richard, who suffers from dementia, portraying different ways, some of them violent accidents, in which he could ultimately die. In each scenario, the elderly Johnson plays along with his daughter's black humor and imaginative fantasies. The film premiered at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival, where it won the Special Jury Award for Innovation in Nonfiction Storytelling. So it's a bit of a different documentary, and I think it's going to be quite interesting, but if you're not in the mood for black humor right now, maybe check out uh, the first series I recommended about Emily in France, or the last one, which I'm getting to in just a second, which is a mystery series set in Australia. So here's the mystery series set in Australia. It's called Mystery Road. Season one is available through Acorn and Amazon Home Video now. Two-time Oscar nominee Judy Davis and award-winning actor Aaron Pedersen star in this Acorn TV original drama set in the Australian outback. When two boys go missing from a cattle station, Detective Jay Swan teams up with local cop Emma James to investigate. But solving the mystery could expose other crimes that haunt the remote town. 
There is a second season on the way, and scenery for this one is fantastic, and the acting is top-notch. So if you like mysteries, check out Mystery Road. So moving on to our Odd Duck recommendation for the week. So this week I'm offering a tech tip, and I'm going to talk about how you use Hoopla. It's a brand new service that the library is offering. This is different from the digital catalog, uh, which is also known as Libby and Overdrive. Hoopla is a brand new service. It's brought to you by the Southeast Bay County Library. Just find a title you like within the catalog and click borrow, and you are ready to start enjoying your title. To begin with, our library is providing you with four instant borrows each month. These digital borrows will reset every month, and you can borrow more than one title at a time. And you heard me correctly, these are instant borrows. You might also call them instant checkouts or on demand items because everything in the Hoopla catalog, all of it, is available to you at any time within your four item monthly limit. So if you find something, you don't have to place a hold for it, you can check it out immediately. Books are checked out for 21 days, videos for 72 hours, and music titles, which by the way, does not mean one or two songs, but it means entire albums, may be checked out for seven days after you borrow them. And I'm not sure why they've got that terminology, are also available for seven days after you borrow them. Basically, it means there's a seven day long period. The Hoopla catalog features the following formats ebooks, downloadable audiobooks, comic books, music, which is complete albums, movies, and TV shows. Now, a word about the streaming video options. Each movie is one checkout, and right now, each episode of a TV show is also one checkout. However, they're working on that. Hoopla intends in the near future to bundle some of their TV shows. So one checkout will, in the near future, equal three TV episodes. Just FYI. Now, having said that, I'm going to jump right in and show you a video of actually how this works. Okay, so here we have HooplaDigital.com. This is the portal for the Hoopla catalog through a web browser. You can also download the Hoopla app to your mobile device, your smartphone, your tablet, both Apple and Android, Windows computers, obviously that's what I'm using, and to your media streaming player, whether it's Roku or Apple, Google, Google's device or Amazon Fire device, because you can indeed put the app on your smart TV or through your media streaming player and watch TV shows and movies through the library that way. I find it easiest to create accounts myself online and then go and log into the app. So that's what I'm going to show you. But if you prefer, you can download the Hoopla app to your mobile device or TV and then go ahead and create your account that way. If you go to HooplaDigital.com, you click on the blue Get Started Today link in the middle of the screen and you'll be greeted with a standard create an account form. You put your email address in, confirm it create a password, confirm that, and then when you click the blue agree button in the bottom right hand corner there, you will be prompted to enter your library card number. You must have a Corning library card to use this service because unlike the digital catalog, which is system wide and paid for by the libraries within the system, the Southeast Bend County Library is paid for Hoopla, so that's why you have to have a Corning card. So once you've done all that, you've clicked agree there, enter your library card number and agree to their terms of service, you'll be logged in. There is no PIN for this. Unlike Overdrive, you do not need a PIN. So I'm going to close this web browser and go back to Firefox to show you what it looks like once you're logged in. I've logged in here. At the top left it says Hoopla, My Hoopla, which is where you can go and click Currently Borrow. Now if you're logged in, which I am already, it's going to show you your four items here if you've got four checked out or however many you have checked out and when they are due. You can from here search the everything box up here at the top of the screen. You can also, I find it easiest there to go to browse so you can choose whichever format you like if you want to look at movies per se. We'll do that. Click on movies or tap if you're using mobile device. And I really, really like under each category, it'll say movies, ebooks right down here underneath the slideshow and then it says recommended featured popular categories 
I've got this set for categories because I really, really like that you can go to categories. Unlike Overdrive, which doesn't offer this, yes, they have an advanced search and you can do this, but if I want just suspensive thrillers, I could click on that just underneath top categories, and that's what's going to come up, just suspensive thriller movies. So if I'm in a mood for, well, let's see, Siren maybe, that sounds good for Vanessa Shaw, so I'll click that. And it tells you about it. Isolated House in the Forest sounds perfect for October and Halloween. So I click borrow. And it tells me this is available. Yep, yeah, sorry, try that again. This title is available for three days after you borrow it. This title is available for streaming and downloading, mobile device only. Are you sure you want to borrow it? Yes, borrow title. Okay, so you can now enjoy this title through Friday, October 2nd. So to actually see it, you got to go back up here to Hoopla, currently borrowed. And then there it is. And if I click it, it's going to think about it for a moment and come up and it will allow me to play it. Uh, actually, I think it's going to auto play in here. So there we go. And I'm not actually going to sit here and have you listen to it, but that's how that works. And if I go back, you'll notice I've also got, I've got an audio book and an album here, Nightfall by Little Big Town. Sounds pretty good. So those are the basics. How you get into it, I will talk more about some other features in future video casts. But for this week, Hoopla Digital, uh, as I said, iOS has an app. If I can spell Hoopla. But they look pretty much the same, whether it's in the Apple or Android stores, or if you want to download the app to Windows computers, you can do that too. Uh, my internet connection is slow. Anyway, Hoopla app is blue. And it looks like that. And that is the odd duck slash tech tip of the week. And moving on to what was previously the cute cat photos of the week. Not to fear, I will occasionally include a cat photo, but uh, I've come to the conclusion that Linda is more interested in her cute cats than probably everyone else out in the universe. So instead, I'm going to include some photos I've taken while I'm out and about and on my walks. And we see two here this week. The one at left is the Snowy Library parking lot taken on one winter's afternoon. And the photo at right shows you the Denison Park Pond on a summer's day. So those are kind of neat photos. It's a great time of year to go out and take a walk. The trees have started to change and boy, lovely colors this year. Must be because it's so dry. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, please send an email to me. My email address is reimerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. And that is the end of the Library Connections content for this week. What follows are the informational credits. The credits include links to articles used to create this week's video, directions as to how to access the library's website, catalogs, blogs, and social media pages, and the library's contact information. And if you've already seen all of that before, as I include every week at this point, feel free to click the stop button. For everyone else, on we go. Library resources you can access from home, page one. Starting clockwise with the top left-hand corner, we see the library's website, found at ssclibrary.org, where you can always find information about what's going on at the library. The second photo at top right-hand corner is the schedule and appointment page, which is found at ssclibrary.org forward slash appointment. You can, of course, also call the library and make an appointment the traditional way by a phone. Just underneath the schedule and appointment page is the Hoopla catalog, which I've discussed in this video cast. If you wish to check out ebooks, audiobooks, streaming videos, on demand or instant access as Hoopla calls it, jump right in. And on the bottom left hand corner, we see StarCat. That's the catalog of physical library materials, print books, DVDs, etc. And I've always thought it's fantastic that that catalog is for all the libraries in the Southern Tier library system. So StarCat has materials from all the public libraries in Stavent, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties and we share. So if you find something that is owned by, say, the Howard Library, 
you can request it and have it sent to our library to pick it up. Library resources you can access from home page two. On the left, we see the digital catalog found online at stls.overdrive.com. This is the catalog of ebooks, audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos, but mostly ebooks and audiobooks that are one copy, one user. And if it's checked out, you put a hold on it. This is for everyone in the Southern Tier Library system. There are two apps for the digital catalog. One is Libby, which you see in the bottom left hand corner, that's for newer devices. And the other is Overdrive, which you see just about five inches to the right of that. That's for older devices. We also offer RB Digital, and that is for on-demand magazines. There are more than 3,000 of them. That may be changing in the near future because the RB Digital company was just purchased by the company that owns Overdrive. But for right now, we offer more than 3,000 on-demand magazines. You can check out as many as you like. Keep it forever if you'd like. So check that out. The website address is rbdigital.com forward slash STLS Shemung cony.com or of course just download the RB Digital app to your mobile device. The library has blogs they're full of fun content. We have a book club for adults blog which basically gives you information about the book club for adults as compared to young adults or children. It's found at ssclbook.club Reporting NY History, the library's local history blog, features weekly photos of the week that show our area in days of old. Found at CorningNYHistory.com. Creation Stationery, the SSCL Makerspace blog for makers. Found at CreationStationery.com. Story Musings is our blog hosted by our resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells. And is found at storymusings.blogspot.com. As you can imagine, Michelle talks about books and writing a lot, so check out her blog, it's cool. And finally, we've got Tech and Book Talk, an SSCL blog found at ssCLtech.com. And I will say it's more of a book review, readers advisory, viewers advisory, music advisory type blog any more than tech. I do offer a few tech tips, but mostly with tech and book talk, I'm talking about books and recommending things you might want to read. If you have questions about library services during the pandemic, or if you'd like to make an appointment to browse, pick up, or return items, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. Our telephone number is the same one that's been for many years. It's in the phone book, area code 607-936-3713. Our annex hours for right now are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Just a quick note, this is the last week we will be at the Annex. Our last day at the Annex will be Friday, October 2nd. After that, we will be moving back to our home at Civic Center Plaza, and the library will be closed as we do a lot of housekeeping and getting ready for patrons to come back in. We've got more than 10,000 books to reshelve. Furniture needs to be moved. The building needs to be thoroughly cleaned after the construction work of putting in the new heating and air conditioning system. So the next time we will be open to the public after Friday, this Friday, October 2nd, will be on Monday, October 28th, and we will be open at our Civic Center Plaza home. You will not need to make an appointment to come in the library. We will allow people to come in in 20 minute increments to browse and check things out. There will be limits on how long you can come in and use a computer. I'll have more about that as we get closer to it, but just know that the last day at the Annex is this Friday, October 2nd, and that the next time we will be open for the public will be in Civic Center Plaza at our regular home on Monday, October 28th. And yes, indeed, fun little phones that I forgot to have come up as I'm talking. Social media, just a weekly reminder, you can connect with the library read library news, and post questions for staff via our social media feeds. The library has pages, also known as feeds, on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. In relation, each video in this series is available on demand via the library's YouTube channel and or page, if you like, after it has first been shown on Facebook Live.
We have just two references for this week. And that's it for this week. I'll be back next week with another edition of Library Connections. Have a great weekend.